Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss statistics chapter from your Karnataka TET paper 2 syllabus and HSTR syllabus. Actually, we have finished arithmetic progression and number system till now. So, I am trying to go in order. Okay. So, statistics is the third chapter. Uh, I think I cannot finish statistics in just one part. Maybe I will need at least two parts to finish this chapter. So, this will be the first part of statistics. Now, one thing which we have to keep in mind is that more or less Karnataka TET, Paper 2 and HSTR Maths syllabus more or less they are similar. Because Karnataka TET Paper 2 is also for higher class, right? And HSTR also is for high school. So, maybe because of that more or less the syllabus is similar. So, if you are a Karnataka TET aspirant or HSTR aspirant, you must watch this lecture to learn statistics. See, I am making sure that I will teach this chapter in as easy as possible manner. Because I know many of us, we have phobia with statistics. We are really worried if we hear this word statistics, right? So, I am trying to make this lecture very simple, as simple as possible. And uh, I will try to make you all understand easily, okay? So, that will be my motto in this lecture. So, let's start. Actually, statistics means uh, you can say that it is set of equations used to analyze some things okay it can be anything if you want to analyze something if you are making some equations to analyze that thing then you can say that you are doing statistics now coming to mathematics statistics means uh, it is the way of uh, collecting summarizing the data the given data okay you can collect that data you can summarize you can analyze you can organize or you can interpret also okay the study of doing all this is known as statistics you do all this with what you do all this with the given data okay by doing all this what you will get you will get to know some conclusions you can draw some conclusions for that particular given data actually statistics it can be put as a branch of Applied Mathematics. It is not a simple Mathematics. It comes under Applied Mathematics. Now we are talking about data in statistics, right? But what is this data? What is this given data? It is just a systematic record of facts or a record of different values of certain quantity. Okay? So much only is data. Data means see, it may be group of numbers, it may be group of players, it could be anything. Data means some information given to you. Okay. Now, this data, it could be of two types. One is the primary data. The second one is the secondary data. Primary data means it is that data which you will collect by having something in your mind. You want to do something using that data. That's why you are collecting that data. Now, who is this you? You want to do something, I am telling you. No? That whoever wants to do something using this data is known as a researcher, right? Anyone who is searching for data is a researcher. So, this data collected by a researcher with some specific purpose in the mind is called primary data. Secondary data means it is gathered from already present source. Means this data is already there. We are gathering it. Okay. We are not creating it. We are not making it. We are gathering the data which is already present. That type of data is known as secondary data. Okay. See this DATA. Some people pronounce it as data. Some say it as data. So both are okay. But uh, actual pronunciation is data actually. Okay, so in this statistics, it is very common word, right? Data. Okay. Now, when we are talking about this data, what are the features of data? Means how one data should be there. 
it will have some properties or it will have some features that information i am talking about it will have some features first feature is the range r a n g e what is this range it is nothing but the difference between maximum and minimum values given in the data okay some values will be given right some numbers may be given so in that numbers that some numbers you call them as observations okay those numbers or those values you call them as a observations in that observations there will be some value which will be biggest there will be some value which will be smallest this biggest value or the maximum value and the smallest value or the minimum value if you subtract them both maximum minus minimum then what value you get no that value is known as range of the data okay it will be different whatever your question is there based on that question only you will know what is the range okay now second one is the term you should know is frequency what is this frequency if you want to see from the point of view of physics then you say that uh, okay if i am talking about a wave the number of waves is frequency we say but here in mathematics what is this frequency here also it will be number only but not number of waves it will be number of times the observation has occurred that is known as frequency how many times that observation has come in the data is known as frequency okay now using this frequency only we can draw frequency distribution table right we know what is the frequency distribution table uh, maybe we all remember some one table which is always present in statistics we put some numbers in that there are different columns there are different rows so that table is a frequency distribution table why do we draw that table we draw that table to show the frequency of different values in the given data okay what is the table known as it is known as frequency distribution table okay now that's it these are the three important features of a data there are many more see actually there is so much to discuss in statistics but what i have done is i have gathered only very very important points and very very important concepts based on your karnataka tet and hstr syllabus and your previous year question papers of hstr and karnataka tet based on all that i am taking this class okay so i am not going to discuss each and everything which comes under statistics i am not going to do that mistake because we have lot to learn right we need to learn what are very very important concepts then then only we can become perfect right okay now this was about the frequency distribution table in frequency distribution table also you will have two types one is the ungrouped frequency distribution table and the other one is the grouped frequency distribution table ungrouped means as the name only indicates it is a table where you will have individual value the frequency of each individual value will be shown in that given data means it will not be grouped that's why it is known as ungrouped frequency distribution table in grouped frequency distribution table that frequency of groups of values will be given together okay that type of table is known as grouped frequency distribution table now we are talking about the statistical data right but how do we arrange this statistical data we can arrange this statistical data in different classes or class intervals now what are these class intervals it is nothing but group of numbers in which terms are placed now how do we write this group of numbers if you remember that table we write it like this right 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 i am just giving example 
like this we write right so this is known as a class interval now there is something known as class size or a class width what is this class width it is number of values that each class has here how many classes are there here this is your class width number of values that each class has okay now there are many values in this class interval right they can be smaller they can be bigger or they can be the intermediate numbers so here the lower value whatever will be there in this class interval now the lower value you call this lower value as lower class limit lower class limit and the largest value or the highest value you call it as a higher class limit or a upper class limit these two terms are important when we talk about class interval why because class interval i will write ci every time you should understand that this is class interval okay this class interval means i will write ci so this class interval is equal to upper class limit minus lower class limit okay this is the formula for class interval if you want to find a class interval for a given data you find the upper class limit and the lower class limit and subtract them okay upper class limit means highest value lower class limit means lowest value given in the data okay now there is another term called class mark this is the mid value of any two limits okay any two know mid value of the upper class limit and the lower class limit you can say which is there exactly in the between one value will come now that is known as class mark now in class interval there are two types of class intervals one is exclusive class interval the other one is inclusive class interval exclusive class interval and inclusive class interval now what is this exclusive class interval in this type of class interval lower limit of one class will be same as upper limit of preceding class or upper limit of previous class i will give one example exclusive class interval means it will be like this 0 to 5 next will be 5 to 10 okay next interval will be 10 to 15 means you can see here 5 is there here 10 is there here right so the lower limit of one class is the same as upper limit of the preceding class 5 5 10 10 next interval will be like this 15 20 okay this type of class interval is known as exclusive class interval in inclusive class interval how it will be means it will be like this 0 to 5 next interval will not start from 5 it will not be 5 to 10 it will be 6 to 11 means next number will come after 5 what comes 6 right that will be there here after 11 what comes 12 right so next interval will be 12 to 17 like that okay so next interval will start from 18 so this type of class interval if it is there then it is known as inclusive class interval okay i hope you all are understanding now one interesting thing i will tell you if you have a inclusive class interval you can convert this inclusive class interval into exclusive class interval how see if i have 0 to 5 next class interval is 6 to 11 i want to convert it into exclusive what i can do you know i can subtract 0.5 from lower limit 
and I can add 0 0.5 to upper limit. I will give you an example, you will understand. See here, if I want to make this inclusive class interval as exclusive class interval, then I will have to subtract 0 0.5 from lower limit here. I will subtract 0 0.5 and I will add a 0 0.5 to upper limit here. I will add 0 0.5. So what will be my class interval then? It will be 0 to 5.5 and then 5.5 to 11. See this and this are same right? So this becomes exclusive class interval. So we can convert inclusive class interval into exclusive class interval. Okay. Now let us take this example to find the class interval of this given frequency distribution table. Here we can see that it is a exclusive class interval, right? See here 22, 22, 29, 29. So this is a exclusive class interval. This is not asked in the question. I am just giving you more information. So to find the class interval, what is the formula we used? Upper limit minus lower limit. So what is the upper limit in the first class interval? It is 22. Lower is 15. In the second, 29 is upper, 22 is lower. I will take first interval. You take any of the intervals. Usually class intervals are same. Usually they are same. Okay. So, upper is 22 minus 15. This will be 7. If I take the second class interval also, I will get the same answer. 29 minus 22. It will be 7. Okay. So, this is how we can find the class interval. Now, let us try to understand all the terms we learnt till now in a frequency distribution table. This is an ideal example for us to understand all the terms we have learned till now. The question is that read the frequency distribution table given below and answer the questions that follow. They have given this table, they have given class interval, this is an exclusive class interval and they have given frequency, then they have given total. Now, first thing we have to find is class interval which has the lowest frequency. It is simple, right? See, I have written it here for you. Which is the lowest frequency here if you see? Lowest frequency is 0, right? Now, what is the class interval corresponding to this frequency? It is 65 to 75. So, that will be your answer. Next question. Class interval which has the highest frequency. Which has the highest frequency here? If you say 8. 8 is the highest frequency. What is the corresponding class interval? It is 75 to 85. That is the answer. Next question number 3. What is the class size of the intervals? Class size means how we find the class size. Remember, we take the difference of any two class intervals, right? So, we have taken here, for example, 65 to 55. How we took 65 to 55? We took this one. Anything we can take actually. So, upper limit minus lower limit, right? 65 minus 55. That will give you 10. So, that is the class size of the interval. Then question number 4. What is the upper limit of the 5th class? If you see here, which is the 5th class? You write down the numbers, you will understand. Because I am doing first problem, that's why I am giving it uh, with a nice clarity. This is 4, this is 5, this is 6 and this is 7. Now 5th class is this, 65 to 75. In this, what is the upper limit? Upper limit is 75, right? So, upper limit will be 75. What is the lower limit of the last class? What is the last class? This is the last class, right? Here, lower limit will be 85 because 95 is greater, right? So, that will be your answer. Okay? I hope now many things are clear for you. Also, you should know how to analyze this table. When you analyze the table, then you can uh, know all the answers asked to you. Okay? I am giving you another example. This time this is in the form of a table. Let us fill this table now. Then it is better to pause the video now. Now you try to fill it by yourself. After filling it by yourself, come back and play the video. Then match your answers with my answers. Okay?
uh, here class interval is given then class limits class size class mark class boundaries now lower limit what is the lower limit here between 10 and 20 10 here it is 20 here it is 30 upper limit which is the greater number here it was 10 here it will be 20 here it will be 30 here it will be 40 simple then class size what you do upper limit minus lower limit upper limit minus lower limit it will be 10 upper limit minus lower limit usually i told you right class size is nothing but class interval okay then 40 minus 30 upper limit minus lower limit it will be 10 again next class mark how to find the class mark to find the class mark you have to add both the limits and divide it by 2 0 plus 10 by 2 will be 10 by 2 it is 5 like that only 20 plus 10 by 2 it will be 30 by 2 it will be 15 then again 20 plus 30 by 2 it will be 50 by 2 or it will be 25 then again 40 plus 30 by 2 actually you should write 30 plus 40 no problem because we are just adding so no problem 70 by 2 it will be 35 okay now class boundaries here in this case it is same true lower limit true upper limit same lower limit will be this only and true upper limit also will be this only this only will be the answer here in this case so don't worry with this just remember that usually it is same 20 30 then it will be 10 20 30 40 that's it we have filled this table now okay now actually we need some tool to represent the given data right in statistics we use graphs to do so right we can use the graphs and represent the given statistical data what are the type of graphs that i will uh, show you uh, some four or five graphs are there but before that i want to show you this coordinate system in order to make you all understand the rules of the graphs which are used to represent the statistical data the same rules which we use for coordinate system means this is a first quadrant here x-axis is positive y-axis is also positive then this is a second quadrant in second quadrant y-axis will be positive but x-axis will be negative this is origin okay then in third quadrant x-axis will be negative y-axis also will be negative then in fourth quadrant x-axis will be positive y-axis will be negative you should use the same rules to draw the graph to represent the statistical data also okay now let's go to the graphs 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six types of ways where you can represent the statistical data first one is the bar graph how does a bar graph look it looks like this on the x-axis you plot the data usually 99 percent times you plot it on x-axis y-axis you give this positive direction that will be your bar graph next is a pie chart you can also represent the data in the form of a circle okay with the percentage you can represent or with the degrees you can represent it depends on you you can use this circle and represent the data this is known as pie chart next is a line graph the simple line graph you plot the values on x-axis and uh, actually you plot the values on the graph then you join those points okay next you can also plot the data using a pictograph means you can put the things only there you can put the pictures there for example here we have the picture of fruits banana apple cherry how many are there four bananas are there three apple are there four cherry are there you have not written the number here you put the drawing here okay another one is a histogram it is nothing but a bar graph but there is no gap in the bars okay this is known as a histogram this bar graph and histogram they are two different things but they look similar that i will uh, talk on this what is the difference i will show you again okay and the next is a frequency distribution you can put it in a uh, form of a table not only like a graph you can put it in the form of a table to represent the given statistical data now let me show you the difference here the bar graph and the histogram here you can see that in uh, bar graph no 
usually usually there are values which we put on the x axis and there is a space between that okay and in a histogram same thing is there but there is no space okay i can show you here again there is no gap okay in bar graph you put the categories like this but in histogram you can put the numbers but you will not have gaps here in the histogram okay now generally what is our aim in uh, this statistics usually our aim is to find something called as arithmetic mean right arithmetic mean we want to find for the given frequency distribution table now what is this arithmetic mean it is nothing but average actually okay in our school also in primary also we have calculated average many times right so here also the arithmetic mean is nothing but average what is that average it is the mean value of a variable okay and how do you find it see for example you have four readings a1 a2 a3 a4 okay you have four readings or four observations you want to find the mean of these so what you do you add all of them a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 then you divide them by 4 why you are dividing them by 4 because there are four readings if you had only two readings a1 and a2 then to find the mean you would have done a1 plus a2 by 2 okay like that only if you had 10 readings a1 a2 till a10 then you would have added all of them and then you would have divided them by 10 because there are 10 readings okay so basically if i want to write it in the form of a summation i write it like this summation a upon n okay this summation you do it from 0 till n means your first number till your last number this is known as mean okay there is another simple question this came in karnataka tet 2021 2021 question paper it is actually i have solved this question paper if you want i'll give the link in the description you can go and watch it there they have they are asking us to find the mean the question is the mean of 10 numbers is 20 if 5 is subtracted from every number the new mean will be see mean they have given total numbers they have given what is the total sum then you have to multiply 20 into 10 you will get total sum now they are telling that if 5 is decreased from all numbers from each number 5 should be decreased means you have to multiply that 5 by total numbers first that will be 50 now you have to subtract 200 minus 50 you will get 150 now to find mean what you have to do you have to do total by how many number are, numbers are there so many numbers isn't it number of numbers so total is 150 and how many numbers are there 10 are there so 15 is the answer okay this is a indirect question they have asked you mean here if you know the concept you can easily solve it right now to find this arithmetic mean i will also write it as am sometimes okay now to find this arithmetic mean there are three methods one is a direct method second method is the shortcut method third method is the step deviation method okay so these are the three methods which we can use in order to find the arithmetic mean in a frequency distribution table first let's see what is direct method in the same manner as we did for this uh, a1 a2 a3 and a4 we put the summation right like that only we can find the mean using this formula summation fi xi upon fi xi means the values of the variable x fi means the frequency distribution in the table so this is xi and this is fi using this formula m is equals to summation fi xi upon fi we can find the mean this method is known as the direct method actually this xi is there no here i can write it like this also right x1 x2 
we don't know till xn it may be there and fi i will name it as f1 f2 i will name it like that fn will be there okay now i can easily find the mean right so whatever the values are there in place of this you put those values while solving the problem now i am giving you symbols okay summation fi xi by summation fi okay with that those x1 x2 x3 till xn those values are with corresponding frequency values right so using this we can find the mean just by this simple formula okay i will give you one example you will get more clarity see the example is find the mean of the following distribution actually few examples which i am teaching in this class now i have taken from rd sharma class 10 book i have put the textbook in the telegram channel also okay not all few of them i have taken which i felt are very important i took those so if you have not joined the telegram channel please join the telegram channel you will find those books there i have put rd sharma soft copy of class 9 and class 10 okay now coming back to the example find the mean of the following distribution see here they have given xi this is your xi and this is your fi okay and they have given you values now you have to find the mean it is simple first you find uh, f into x fi xi because what is there in our formula it is summation fi xi upon summation fi right so this summation fi xi if i want to find this summation fi xi first i have to find fi xi right i will have to multiply xi into fi xi into fi i will have to multiply these numbers and then if i add them add all these i will get summation fi xi summation means addition right okay and and for the denominator i need summation fi only so i will have to add this i will get summation fi hmm? i can give one symbol as n for that summation fi also okay and for mean the symbol is x bar some people use this there are so many different different symbols don't worry about the symbol but this is one symbol x bar okay now it is simple right i have 4 i have 5 i multiplied 4 5 is 20 i got then 4 6 tens are 60 i got then 9 tens are 90 i got then 10 to 7 10 into 7 70 i got 15 into 8 i got 120 here i added fi i got summation fi 40 then i added fi into xi all the values which i got i added i got summation xi fi now just simple thing i will have to take this right summation fi xi upon summation f i so what is there here it is 360 and what is there summation fi it is 40 00 cancel 4 ones are four nines are so answer will be nine that's it okay i'll give you another example find the mean of the following distribution they are given this uh, question there is a table frequency distribution table is there we have to find the mean it is simple as i told you earlier also i multiply all this after multiplying you will get these values correct now you add these to find summation fi add these to find summation fi xi then you take the division xi fi by summation fi you will get 55 okay this will be your mean another example i am giving if this is little bit different question i am expecting this type of a question this time in karnataka tet and hst are both if the mean of the following distribution is 6 find the value of p see what they have done here they have given mean already they have given that mean is 6 here in this class interval there is some letter p plus pi is there that p you have to find using the same method only you can do see how you do first you find the summation fi added okay then you find fi xi multiply xi fi same manner you multiply p plus 5 into 2 also you will get 2p plus 10 now you do summation fi how you will do you add all this you will get 42 10 20 30 42 correct you will get uh, here you will get 42 now this 42 plus 2p plus 10 you will get 2p plus 52 this will be your summation 
f i x i. Okay. Now you use the formula for the mean. Summation f i x i by summation f i or n anything. Both are same, right? So here now you can simply you can do simplification and find the value. Correct. You pause the video and try to do it by yourself. How you are? Whether you are also getting seven or no? Let us see. Okay. You you should solve this and you should let me know in the comment section whether you are getting or not. Another question which I have taken is from GPSTR 2022. This was a two mark, uh, actually three mark question. Actually, in GPSTR there was subjective part also, right? So that question is there here. Calculate mean for the following frequency distribution table. Actually, I have solved this question paper also. I'll give the link in the description. You, if you want to watch it, you can go and watch it. Uh, this is a GPSTR 2022 question paper. Here they have given class interval. You have to find x i. How you will find x i? You do upper limit plus lower limit by two. Okay, means fifteen plus five by two. You will get ten. Like that only you do for fifteen and twenty five. Fifteen plus twenty five by two. You will get forty by two. You will get twenty. So in this way you find x i. F i is given in the question. Then you find the summation f i x i and summation f i, and then you find the mean the way we did it like uh, previously. No, like that only you can do. Okay. I have solved this GPSTR 2022 question paper. You please go and watch that lecture also. It will be very helpful for you all. Okay, I will give the link in the description. Please go and watch this maths question paper. There are two maths question papers. One is uh, uh, for the maths teacher. The other one is for the science teacher. Both question papers I have solved and I have put it in this YouTube channel. Now this is another example actually. This question is from GPSTR. 2022 question paper. This is simple. You have to find mean, right? You have x, you have f. X is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50
plus 58 plus 70 plus 80 plus 88 okay so if you add all this you will get cumulative frequency with this also you can find the mean okay so this is one procedure to find the mean okay friends then i will stop the class here or else it will become a lengthy class you all will get bored i will try to finish statistics in the next part if not possible maybe i will make third part i don't know when i teach i will come to know at that time only okay so i really hope that this class will help you all uh, as usual please do work hard your hard work will surely pay you a fruit okay and please do subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell icon if you won't hit that bell icon no you will not get the updates because uh, nowadays i am frequently uploading the videos right i am sharing the link in the telegram channel but then if you uh, hit that bell icon no you will also get the notification if i upload the lecture okay at the earliest you can watch my lectures if you hit that bell icon okay and also if you like my work please do like and share my videos Okay friends, all the best. Thank you. Bye.